Flow. I am moderator, joined by uh, Brett Thomas Thomas for this next match. We see that uh, Vidra is bringing a very much a Mar Victor uh, composition, only having one token Galente uh, ship. Meanwhile, Odin's call uh, to meet this Amar team has brought a uh, Galente core uh, with one uh, Armageddon. Um, I'm expecting a uh, very heavy brawl. We're seeing this uh, kind of um, Oracle, not so much cheese, but uh, we're seeing that given that the Oracles are very underpointed this year, um, they do an appreciable amount of damage. Um, and combined, when you have six sets of heavy lasers, they're going to break through basically anything. And we're seeing that already be the case as the Paradigm is getting absolutely hammered immediately in the first opening seconds of the match. Um, we see some reps try to land on top of him uh, as Pandy is the initial tackle. Those oracles already burning away free. Um, unfortunately for Odin, they're not having any good answer for killing those oracles. And we see um, Paradigm just getting absolutely demolished, um, getting into about half armor. Um, with Parabots now landing on top of him, stabilizing just a little bit, but I don't think it'll be enough. Well, the big thing is, is he's probably got an adaptive armor hardener, so the longer they take to kill him, the more he's going to be tanked, which is huge, which is why you're seeing a lot of drones drop off, which are like Valkyries, they're trying to spread their damage out, Acolytes, they're spreading all their damage out onto different drone types, because the entirety of their damage is laser, and if his adaptive hardener swaps to EM Thermal, they're not going to be able to do enough damage as he finally gets on top of Pandy in this Abaddon. Yeah, and I mean, as you were mentioning about the reactive armor hardener, I can't help but feel like that might have happened. They do take about a minute to fully spool up, and, you know, we're a minute 20 into the match. Um, we see that there are uh, drones on top of him, but they're also acolytes um, and some warriors and Valkyries, so we do see a bit of a spread. Uh, Paradigm is dropping lower and lower. I mean, even with fully shifted resist, it's a lot of incoming damage. Uh, Nika Noiser now being the primary, but um, so far... The Inquisitor is being able to sustain him. Yeah, the Reptrons and the Oneros are just about not doing enough to keep him alive. Oh, it looks like the Abad the Armageddon didn't manage to land newts on these oracles, where the Abaddons have 3200s and can just cap back up when you newt them down. The oracles don't have the capacitor if you land newts on them. It looked like that wasn't the case. The Geddon was uh, newting down all the Abaddons and it just looked like they didn't drop off enough damage and the Vindicator finally went down. Yeah, speaking of things going down, that Vexicator, Vexer absolutely got scorched uh, by, you know, those Abaddons and the Oracles. Oracles known for being able to project fairly well. And, I mean, just look at the Oracles. They're not even moving. They're just sitting still, just being happy to just pound away a range. And look at Lepesh. He's already down into one-third, now one-half armor. Yeah, he's going to struggle now because he doesn't have those heavy rep drones that the other Vindicator had. He just has that little bit less rep power staying on top of him, and especially because the Aeneros has probably used all his heat to try and keep the first Vindicator alive, it doesn't look like they're going to break anything because this Vindicator isn't breaking through Inquisitor reps. Yeah, I mean, it, it hurts. You know, you've already lost one Vindicator. Um, you know, that's about half your damage in this... Uh you know, composition already down. And I mean, Odin has lost basically their entire linchpin setup. And now uh, Viter is, I mean, it looks like they're going to have a clean 100 to nothing sweep unless something uh, wonky happens. Melinda now being uh, the primary. I, I mean, look at the attack bar for Odin's call. It looks like you have, you know, it's, there's nothing. Meanwhile, look at Vidra. They've got a, you know, they've got a strong girthy defense and attack bar. Yeah, it looks like, uh, Owens call went very heavy on rep bots and relied on the Vindicators to try and break stuff, but unfortunately they went ham on the Abaddons, which have that huge amount of EHP and have that resistance of a battleship. They just didn't manage to break it in time. If they did something else, maybe rush forward and hit an Oracle, they may have been able to turn it around, but unfortunately they just couldn't out-tank the DPS of the Abaddons. Yeah, and the Megas for uh, Odin's call now boundary violating so if we look at the bans here, Viter's done something that's very um, unique. They banned Scimitar, or they, they banned the Kitsune, Golem, and Lashak. Um, I can't help but feel like Viter being one of these kind of perennial tournament um, 
you know, contenders know something that Odin doesn't, or they were just very prepared for the setup. I mean, this is about as close to a hard counter as you can face of bringing, you know, an armor comp that doesn't have a good support tackle wing uh, against an Oracle core. Well, the one thing we've seen this uh, heavy abandoned comp do really badly against is the the kind of nightmare Loki rush because it has high EM resistance because it's T2 hulls and it can get on top of the oracles and dumps the oracles quickly because it's speedy. So banning the Loki shuts that comp down so that they shuffle into something that has lower resist against all the EM damage that they've brought. Yeah, I mean... Uh... It makes sense. You also want to ban uh, Kitsune. You would want to not have to deal with any sort of jams in uh, the position of uh, Vydra. I mean, we say that as the last Magus drops for Odin's Call. Um, cleaned 100 to nothing sweep, um, showing the dominance that they've you know shown for years now. Um, with that, we'll send it back to the studio.